It's about 99 years ago, a successful corner of early black entrepreneurship uh, was burned to the ground in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was one of the worst acts of racial violence in this country. Some uh, estimates say 300 black people were killed in an area that was known then and now as Black Wall Street. And we went back to Tulsa's Black Wall Street to see how today's entrepreneurs are faring through the epidemic. Here's Andrea Day with their story and our history. Tulsa is a resilient place. It is a community that has overcome a lot. There has been lots of challenges, and it's oftentimes felt like people have tried to get rid of us, but you just keep on pushing forward. We came from the ashes after the massacre, after they burned down our community, and once again, we've risen high above. They are the new entrepreneurs of Black Wall Street, an area in Tulsa now battling COVID-19 and living through a historic revolution. Here I am at the start of this pandemic with absolutely no model for some online component. Rico Wright owns the Black Wall Street Art Gallery and the struggle is real. And day after day, I'm just losing money. So I'm having to release uh, employees. I've got bills piling up and I realize this is because we weren't being creative. We launched a new clothing line as a result of it. I went straight to my webmaster and said, hey, we need to revamp the website for the gallery. It was mind blowing to see the revenue coming in because when you're in devastation, you know, you're sort of down and out. I mean, I was already consumed by COVID. That's enough on its own. And then it was quantified by, you know, the racial tensions. And I thought to myself, okay, now we're bringing traffic here, which means it increases the likelihood of something dramatic happening that's reminiscent of the massacre. But protesters brought new hope. Oh my goodness, the support has been astronomical, particularly white people who want to become allies. They're asking, what can I do to help? They're wanting to spend money with black owned businesses. They bought everything. Right next door, a high end sneaker shop also struggling with the pandemic. I think the harder hit people are financially, the less viable it is for them to invest in sneakers. Before the pandemic, we were really focused on getting people into our store. And suddenly, online sales and Instagram became a lifeline. We started something called Sneakerheads of Tulsa, where we would feature local sneakerheads. It was just an invitation to continue to engage with us. One of the lessons that we've taken from this time, the pandemic, the racial tension, the different things that have been thrown at us is that we need to be vigilant and we need to adapt. There's no way that I could have ever predicted anything like this. I literally can't even imagine what happens next. There are people on both sides that I feel a great responsibility to, people who don't believe that, you know, Black entrepreneurship can be successful. There are people who, you know, are really banking on it. You know, they really look to us, especially here on Black Wall Street, to be leaders in this. Down the street, a family-owned restaurant also working to stay afloat. I grew up in the restaurant. I've been cooking since I was about eight years old. The restaurant first opened here on Black Wall Street by her grandmother in 1974. She was confident enough to start something, to stick with it, and keep on pushing forward despite whatever was thrown her way. When the pandemic first hit, it was very, very scary. Most of our business is from dining customers. But then the demonstrations brought in new sales. I did not expect for just so, so much business to where you can almost not even like keep up or take a breath. I did not expect it. Our revenue has doubled, which is a tremendous blessing. We've already had the path laid from the past. So we know exactly what we need to do. We put our nose to the grind. We think of creative ideas to come together, just as they did in rebuilding Black Wall Street. I want people, when they come to this city, to see that this is not just a place where Black people lost all their businesses. This is a place where you can see the resilience among the people. You can see that new businesses are emerging, the ashes of the old.